All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad 3 15 ITL05. Right, this is going to be a quick video because I actually have to head out for the new year. So basically, we're going to use a JS1 or PH1 or J1 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, as you can see, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. All right, so we got three here, and then we got three here, and then we got four down here. So let's go ahead and remove all these screws. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. If you don't know what to comment, just say like, hi, I'll respond back. Um, sometimes YouTube filters out comments and I don't get to see them. Uh, so if I don't respond, you can try leaving another comment, maybe say something else, and hopefully the dumb algorithm won't like just auto-delete them. But anyways, once you get all these screws out, we're going to carefully open this up. Okay, I'm going to get my fingernails in the little gap here between the palm rest and the bottom cover. And I'm going to push with my thumb on the palm rest, not on the touchpad. And we're just going to pull like this, okay? So we're going to go over here to this side. Again, you don't want to pull on the palm rest. I mean on the touchpad. So there we go, we got a gap here. Once you get that gap, you can get your fingers in there, fingernails in there, or you can use plastic pry tool tools obviously. And then we'll work our way around. I'll slide my fingernail up the edges as I go ahead and pull the bottom cover up. So just like this, okay, pull that up. Some people tell me why do I use fingernails, cut my fingernails, use some pry tools, but you can see how quick and efficient fingernails are for doing this kind of thing. All right, so I'd rather keep my job simple than have nice looking fingernails for people. I don't know, <laughs> I don't mind. All right, so we're gonna pull this and then I'm gonna kind of wiggle this side to side as I pull up and there we go. All right, so the customer said this, Mac, uh, sorry, not <laughs> this laptop just randomly shut itself off. It's strange, it looks like on some, like it's supposed to have a little metal cover here, but it's missing. I don't know if they took it somewhere and somebody took that out and lost it. Um, but yeah, all right, there's one stick of RAM here. This is soldered RAM. Um, let me actually get a thumbnail real quick here. I'm going to just center this. Okay. And then, uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to actually disconnect the battery and the CMOS BIOS battery. So here you can see the batteries here. We have a few screws holding it in place. We got two on this side and then I believe just one here. Okay, once we get the three screws out, we should hopefully be able to remove the battery. I'm going to try and drain the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery, um, and we'll see if that gets it to power on. Anyways, we're going to pull this up. I'm going to get my finger underneath to grab the wires here, pinch with my other finger, and then wiggle it side to side as I pull, and you can see that walks the cable out very easily. Here you can see the battery model number is L16C2PB1, so if you need a battery, that's what it is. Okay, we'll set that aside. All right, um, after removing the battery, it's always a good idea to open the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This makes it a lot safer to work on, okay? Um, take that few 15 seconds and it could save you from causing hundreds of dollars of damage to your laptop or your customer's laptop if you're working on someone else's. All right, so we'll get it a few, hold it for a few seconds. Close that, all right. Again, about 15 seconds or longer will be good. Uh, I'm going to double check these screws and make sure they're tight because sometimes the hinge screws come loose and then that causes some issues and it rips them out of the computer. Okay, anyways, we have the RAM here. Pull the two tabs to the side, pops up. You can go ahead and pull that out. Here you can see the RAM is a 4 gig PC4 3200 AA stick of RAM. So most likely this is also 4 gig stick um, soldered, so 8 gigs total, especially with it being an i3. We got the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. I'm gonna just grab the wires, wiggle, and pull. Um, also, if you're wondering, if you're replacing this, make sure the black wire is going towards the right side, and then the gray wire is going towards this keyboard. This is the keyboard cable, keyboard cable latch, all right? So you don't wanna flip it over and then fry the computer that way. I'm gonna short the two pins back here um, to reset the BIOS, hoping that maybe something happened in here that prevented it from just powering back up. Um, I did plug the charger and the charger light doesn't even come on. So yeah, that has me a little worried, but we'll see. All right, there's an M.2 uh, PCIe NVMe SSD here. They are using one of the shorter ones, but you can use a full length uh, SSD here. Um, you will have to transfer over this 
little hex key thing. So you might have to use some little pliers to twist that out or get the right sized um, hex key thing. Let me actually see what size it uses. So we can use this screw to remove this. Um, the wireless antennas are a little bit in the way. Um, just be careful with that. We're gonna pull that and wiggle it. All right, let's unstick this. Okay, thermal pad, set that aside. And let me see, I think that's probably a four. Let's see, five. Oh, it's actually a 5.0. So we're gonna use a five hex like this. Okay, it has that hex shape. I don't know if that's the right term, but there you go. You can see you can take that out and then you can put it in a different one. All right, um, also, if you can't put this back because the hex thing is like too deep, um, the way I put these back is I'll take the screw that we removed, all right, from the SSD that was holding the SSD down, and I'll actually screw this back into that hex piece, and I'll use that to screw the whole thing back in. All right, then you should be able to remove the screw. If for some reason the screw is stuck tighter than this piece, then you might have to get like some pliers to hold that in place and then spin that separately. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna now tighten this back. All right, let's go ahead and get the SSD back in. Um, I kind of just want to reseat some components to see if that will help, but uh, most likely um, it's either a bad motherboard issue or something else. All right, you got this cable here running to the connectors over here, the I.O. board. There's the um, SD card slot. There's the one key recovery button here. You can use a little pin or a folded out small paper clip or like sim eject tool to press this button uh, when the computer's off to turn it on and go into like boot menu. You can go to BIOS, you can go to like recovery menu. You also have the headphone jack there. All right, and also the speakers connect to it right there. That speaker um, connects here and then the other speaker is connected to that speaker um, at the bottom here, sorry. Stuff in the way. There's the wire that runs along to the other speaker there. All right, we're gonna get this back in. We're gonna just tilt this at an angle, push that in, and then get that back down. Um, these thermal pads, honestly, um, I don't know. I don't feel they really help that much because um, what it does is it pulls the heat and kind of spreads it out, uh, but it like puts it into other components that aren't supposed to take that much heat. So I don't know. I always see the SSDs with heat sinks and thermal pads like failing more often. So I don't know if that's just a coincidence or maybe they're running faster. So because of that, they die faster. I don't know. Anyways, here you have the uh, wireless card. All right. You have this connector for the fan. I'm going to have to clean the fan. It looks like you can take these three screws out to get the fan out. Um, you do have to unroute all the wireless antennas. The antennas come out by pulling straight up from the tail. I don't want to pull them out because sometimes those connectors are soldered bad and then they break. All right, you also have the uh, touchpad, trackpad connector here. These have little flip latches. You flip this one up, you can pull that cable out. The keyboard, the latches on this side, you flip that up, you can pull that out. Um, it looks like some models have a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. There's a flip latch to get a connector there. I don't know if it came with one. Sometimes it comes in the box and people don't know and they throw it away. But uh, yeah, all right, then you got the LCD LVDS connector right here. Flip that latch and you can pull that out. But if you're gonna mess with this, it's very important. Disconnect the battery, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before messing with that. You also have this other connector that's attached to the same cable. Usually that's for like the microphones and stuff. All right, so yeah, um, charge port is soldered to the motherboard and not really much else to show inside here. So I'm gonna take this outside, dust it off, and then we'll reassemble this and hopefully um, it will power up. If not, the motherboard is definitely fried. All right, so I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, as you can see, the fan is all cleaned up. Let's go ahead and reassemble this thing. We'll reconnect the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery, whatever you want to call it. All right. And let's see. Okay, so we'll get that in. We'll now get the battery back into place. So just line up the little raised peg and this. Um, you do want to actually slide the connector in first. Make sure if you're replacing the battery that you have the red wires going towards the CMOS battery and the black wires going towards the keyboard cable. If you flip it over, um, then you can fry your whole computer. So yeah, be very careful with that. All right, now we're gonna pinch that all together. We'll get the three screws back in. Okay, make sure you get it in the right spots. Right. And then we'll see, test our luck. We'll see if the customer is lucky or if they're not. One thing I probably should have done is 
to double check this connector, but it looks like it's held in well. I don't think that can come out at all. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out. The customer said that nobody opened it before, so I guess from factory they just didn't put that metal shield, which is really weird. All right, anyways, um, I'm gonna clean, oh, I need to clean the bottom of it as well. There's not really much dust on the bottom. And then we'll get this back on. I didn't see any strange signs of like liquid or anything inside here, so <clears throat> it's really strange. The customer said they were using it and then it just randomly shut off. So very strange. Okay, we'll get all of these back in. We're gonna get all these screws back in and then see if it powers on, but that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. Again, and if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Again, if you can't help that way, it helps a lot to uh, watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. Even if it's just to say hi, I'll respond back. And yeah, let's go ahead and see. I don't know, there's some kind of gross stuff there, but it's not inside, so... I don't know, but it looks like it's completely dead. So I guess this thing is a dead motherboard. It's an i3, only 8 gigs RAM. This laptop, probably if you were to buy another one, is probably in like the 350 or so range, maybe 400 at most. So I wouldn't think it makes sense to try and do a motherboard repair because that will already be close to the cost of a new laptop and then you don't have the one year warranty and all that stuff. So yeah, anyways, that's pretty much it. Uh, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.